Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. As you can see, I have a new background. That's because I moved uh, finally. So we were able last weekend to actually move into our own apartment and like all the renovations and stuff are almost done. So like to a point that we are able to move in. I mean, we don't have a kitchen yet but our workplace and with our, I mean, my partner and mine is like right across. So, you know, we can for the time being just cook here. And yeah, I mean, obviously this is not gonna stay how it looks like right now. This is not done at all. I wanna like have a really nice and cute background. I wanna have a larger working station here, which means I'm gonna double the amount of space I have here and work on a couple of other things. For example, how I'm filming. So obviously there is a camera right in front, which is gonna stay, but the drop down camera, which is like coming from a tripod sitting to the left of me has never really been something that I liked because it takes space away from my working area. So I was thinking about like redoing that with like some sort of over hang or like I don't know rail system not sure about that yet I'm testing something out or I will be testing something out which will come in this week so hopefully that's gonna work out and yeah I have so many other plans I need desks I need I have like a whole set for like photography and stuff which is sitting over there which has to be mounted so I have a whole bunch of more space but at the same time a whole bunch of like machinery and like tools and stuff that were just sitting in boxes in the other room that I was working in because the room was teeny tiny and this one is you know three times the size but still it's gonna be really really small very soon if I just continue like putting more stuff in you know to an extent I have to kind of but you know what I'm saying I guess <laughs> also I know you guys wanted a room tour I didn't do that for the old I'm pointing over there because that's literally where my old studio was basically we just switched rooms and now I'm in the big room <laughs> I used to live in this room so that's now my studio, which is amazing. Anyways, I know you guys wanted to have a room tour over in my old studio. Did not end up filming that because it was so cramped and like it, it wasn't pretty or anything. It was just very cramped and not tidy at all because it, uh, there was just no storage available. So stuff was just like sitting everywhere. <laughs> Hopefully that's gonna change for this room right here. I have some shelves coming in, so there will be more storage. And once everything is, you know, final, <laughs> I'm gonna make a room tour for my new studio. I'm gonna do a room tour then once everything is like finalized or semi-finalized, you know, once it's presentable. <laughs> Anyways, so that's the news. I'm super excited. The cats have already, you know, adjusted, I guess, to the new apartment. They're super cute. It feels like they're liking each other a bit more because one, like my older cat is super territorial and she did not like another new cat just invading her space, I guess. So the fact that both of them have to adjust to a new space without any territorial claims and stuff, I think does good for their relationship. Hopefully they seem to come along better than they did here because there was a lot of hissing and um, you know. Anyways, that's the news. And for today's video, I actually have a super easy tutorial because I'm gonna do some very nice silky flowy pants with an elastic waistband. And because, <laughs> because it seemed rather easy, um, I needed a challenge. So I ended up, you know, adding a side panel to both of the legs, which I fully embroidered. <laughs> and this is what it looks like. It looks so nice. Like this floral embroidery just does it all for me. I already like added pockets to this panel right here. I'm gonna do the other side with you guys. I mean, I've showed you how to do these kind of pockets in literally my last video. So I'm gonna keep it short <laughs> and you can go ahead and watch the video that I posted last week about my trench coat that's like sitting right here where I'm showing you how to do these kind of pockets. Also, another thing, I wasn't sure if it's welt or flap pockets. 
you know, sources that I researched, they said flap pockets. That's why I called them that. But some of you guys, especially on my Instagram, were also like, is it weld or flap pockets? And since I'm not a native, it would be amazing if somebody who knows that could let me know down in the comments below. I filmed a little bit while the machine was embroidering, so I can show you a little bit of that footage. I am so in love with this embroidery machine. Actually, next week I'm going to post an in-depth video on a tutorial that I will be fully sewing on the embroidery machine because it's obviously also a sewing machine. I'm gonna go more in depth on everything around that machine and what it can do and stuff like that. I've been teasing for such a long time and it's finally time next week. This is actually part of the outfit that I'm doing for that video. This will be the pants and then I'm gonna do like a really nice blouse on top, which I'm also going to embroider, you know? Like it's gonna be a lot, but I am very hopeful that it's gonna look awesome. So make sure that you subscribed and ring the bell that you get notified when I post that video next week. But, you know, enough talking. It's been a lot of changes, so I hope you're fine with this very long intro. Anyways, let's get started. So to sew the pockets right here, you're gonna want to just transfer the placement of the pocket that is on the pattern piece onto your uh, side panel. And then you have the flap for the pocket that you have to iron in half like this in order to be able to sew it on. You also want to add your stitching lines onto this piece with like some removable fabric marker. And once you have that, you wanna pin the flap pocket right on top of your positioning here. I just have to check which side I already finished. Obviously you wanna do exactly the opposite side for the other panel. So I have my opening from this side, so I need my opening from that side here, which is why I'm going to put right sides together with the fold in this direction. So once I have it finished, it's gonna sit like this and you can put your hands in from this side. Just like that, and I'm gonna stitch from this needle over my stitching line all the way to here. Now that that's done, we're gonna do our specific cutting with this shape right here. So let's go in at the middle and then cut towards the stitching line or like the stitches in the corner like that. And now we can iron this whole thing while folding everything towards the inside here. So I like to do this stage first here and just iron the seam over there nicely. And then I like to like fold the triangles to the inside and iron again. Like that. And now we can pin the triangles to the flap and also sew that on from corner to corner. Just like this. And now once we turn it to the wrong side facing up, you can go ahead and iron the remaining seam allowance to the side as well. Then you're gonna grab the outer pocket, which is gonna be sewn onto the side that is still open because it has to reach over the flap, which is the distance that is attached to this piece. So you're gonna put it right here. Let's sew this. You wanna iron the seam allowance to this side. And to the other side, you're gonna put the inner pocket the same way like right here. And now once you fold this over, it should fit pretty perfectly onto the other pocket. And to make everything super flat, you're not gonna adjust, you know, if it, if it is not perfectly aligned. You're just gonna leave it as is and pin all layers together. Like right here, you wanna also catch the small triangle. And then you're gonna go over to just two layers and you're just gonna pin them together however they fall. Otherwise, you know, it's gonna probably bulk up at some areas and this way it's gonna just lay super flat. And then you're gonna sew right around here and also overlock. I already overlocked this seam and the one underneath to have everything super tidy. And to finish it off, I'm gonna add bar tags at both of these sides with a zigzag stitch. And now both of the pockets are fully done and we can go ahead and put them on the pants. So what I like to do first is to close both the center front and the center back seam. This is my front piece. It has this center front seam right here, which is this right here. So I'm just gonna 
sew this together and overlock and I'm gonna do the same for the back piece. So you want to iron the seam allowance to like one side. And now I'm taking my front pan and I need to know which one it is, front or back, because now we are going to put the side panels with our pockets in place. And obviously you want to, you know, put the right pocket to the right side. <laughs> so the pocket opening needs to face towards the front right here. So this is how they're going to get attached. Therefore, we're going to put right sides together here at the side seam, fold the pocket out of the way and then sew from all the way up here at the waist down to the hem and repeat that for the other side. I'm going to go ahead and iron the seam allowance of the side panel towards the front just because the side panel is so much thicker so that it already wants to lay like that. Otherwise, if you just iron it towards the side panel, it's going to bulk up and it's not going to look nice. And now we can put right sides of our back pant on top here. Obviously it's like way bigger now because half of the back pant is on the side panels. Side seam usually goes in between here. So I'm just going to put right sides together and close the side panel seam in the back. And let's also press the back seam and you can already see how pretty this insert looks like. I am contemplating whether I should add embroidery over the hem here as well. I think it would look really pretty but it's gonna take a long time again so it depends on how much time I have left. I'm gonna shoot this tomorrow so there's not too much time. <laughs> Okay, so my plan now is that I will be embroidering this piece here, but first I will be ironing the hem upwards because my embroidery design has a scalloped edge. So I want to have basically the hem, I want to cut out the scallops. I think that's going to look really nice. It's a... It, the weather outside is crazy. I don't know if you can hear the thunder, but it's like super close. Anyways, I'm hoping that it's going to work out like that. If not, I have a problem, but we're going to solve it once it's time. <laughs> so I'm just going to iron upwards the hem right here. I have four centimeters facing and then a centimeter of seam allowance. So I'm going to iron up five centimeters. So I'm going to use some tear away stabilizer. And this is the size of the hoop that I'm using which has like some tryouts in it. So I'm just gonna cut out an amount. I think I have to add like a strip of fabric here so that I can put it in the hoop. I have done that before. What I do essentially is just like add a strip of fabric right here, just with the, like a super big stitch. Otherwise the embroidery is just gonna look wobbly and not nice essentially. So that's what I'm gonna do here as well. Now I have like a super large space. So basically I'm gonna put it in like this. And I wanna make sure that the hemline is parallel and not too close to the edge so that I can't embroider on it. This looks good to me. And let's head over to the sewing machine or the embroidery machine. So I have everything now prepared. As you can see, this is my design that I chose. And there is the projector, which is gonna show you where exactly it's gonna stitch. I'm gonna do it in one color. This is like basically the same color as my fabric. And yeah, I think we're good to go. So let's start. It's gonna base around the design first because that's what I wanted it to do. That's my setting that I chose. And that's just gonna ensure that, uh, at least to me, it just ensures a bit that nothing's gonna move around. And it's just passing the previous design. And now it's gonna start doing its thing. It's just gonna probably tell me to like go play again. And now it goes. Starting over there. <laughs> and it's gonna do the scalloped edges first. These are pretty huge scallops, so I hope that's gonna look really nice once I cut everything out. And yeah, 
So that's gonna take the 43 minutes. We have time to do other stuff now, so let's do a time lapse, I guess. Okay, this took way too long. <laughs> did not expect it to take as long as it actually did, but I'm finally done with the hem on both legs. I had to do, I think, four or five rounds or like designs, you know, I had to multiply the designs for each hem. It's not, you know, perfect, but it's as good as it needs to be, I guess. You can't really see the imperfections because most of them are, you know, in this area here, which we're gonna cut away, so nothing too bad. And that's exactly what we're gonna do next. So I'm gonna take like my smallest scissors I started here already and super carefully I'm going to cut just next to the stitches here so that I'm not gonna like cut any of the stitches so that it doesn't open up. I'm gonna do the rest off camera because this is pretty uncomfortable, like cutting like this. <laughs> and just like that, the scalloped edge is done. Let's just iron this one last time. And then we can put the pants together finally. So what we're gonna do is close the inner leg seam that is still open, which is why I was able to embroider the hem. So I'm just gonna put right sides of front and back legs together, match up the center back and center front seam. And then you wanna match up the hem and close the inner leg seam and overlock as well. And let's iron the seam allowance towards the back. And next up, we're gonna iron the waist facing down, which is also five centimeters. And now at four centimeters, I'm gonna top stitch all around the waistband with a small opening that I'm gonna leave in the center back here to insert the elastic through. So I'm just gonna like sew until here and leave this small of a gap. And that's what we're gonna use later to insert the elastic. I'm gonna use this white elastic, which is 3.5 centimeters wide. And I cut off approximately 60 centimeters. It's a bit less than that. I basically just, you know, put it around my waist uh, and cut it wherever it was comfortable. So that's very dependent on your elastic. You can do like approximately 10% less than your waist measurement. That is usually a good number, you know, but just to be like super sure, you can always like pull it around your waist and go by that. And now I'm gonna take a safety pin and feed the elastic through the opening that I left here in the center. And what's important here is to make sure to not twist the elastic on the inside. You always want it to, you know, stay facing one direction. And you also want to fix the elastic, the end of the elastic in place somewhere so that it doesn't pull inside. And now you can use the safety pin and guide the elastic through the inside. And now that you're done, make sure that you did not twist it and you can go ahead and sew the two ends together. I like to do like a rectangle, do it as flat as possible. Don't do like right sides together or whatnot. This should not bulk up the seam very much. So just go over like this. And now let's pull the elastic towards the inside. 
I like to just, you know, to make it even to do this a couple of times all around so that it is, you know, not bunched up in a one specific place more than the other. We can go ahead and close this gap now. And what I'm going to do as well is do a top stitch in the middle, in the center, so that the elastic just doesn't fold over, roll inside this thing here because I hate when that happens and I did so many times with like bob pants like these. So let's do that as well. And that's it already for today's video. I hope you enjoyed and I hope you liked this small that turned rather big project. It is currently half past nine in the evening or at night. It's dark outside already. Did not realize uh, that this would take such a long time, but you know, it is what it is. And the pants turned out really, really cute. So it was worth it. And I'm super excited for next week's project as well, where I'm going to dive more into detail about the machine that I'm using and everything around that and I'm gonna do the shirt portion of this outfit that I am creating. So tune in for that. Make sure to subscribe and ring the bell so you'll get notified every time that I post. I post on Sundays so you can keep an eye out for that. Follow me on my socials. Links are in the description down below. The best way to support me is to just check out my Etsy store and get these pants if you like them. So that would be amazing if you could do that. There are so many other patterns on my store. Actually every video here on my channel has a pattern to go with so go check them out and thanks a lot to all of my channel members you can get exclusive benefits through the link in the description down below so thank you for watching and I'm gonna see you next Sunday bye guys